sequentially down the disc as it's going. It is laying the data back out exactly in the same order that it came from, but it's laying it out on the destination disk. So the destination disk is actually uh, almost instantaneously sector by sector as this is being read, is being written directly to the destination disk. So even if I pulled the plug on this right now, it would pick up where it left off. So I could do that, but uh, it'll read the configuration and this entire map. I mean, literally I can like stop this I can, you know, quit the program, unplug the equipment, walk away, and start it back up. And it'll be right where it was, where it left off, and you'll actually be able to continue from where you actually left off, and it'll continue back from that exact location. That's correct. It writes a profile. A de it actually has a flag. It has this map. And it's an LBA map, and there's actually a flag for every single sector. And it tells what the status of that flag was. And that configuration is loaded into the device every time it starts. And it does it by identifying the serial number and stuff, basically, of the original device. So when that device is bound to this device, as long as those two devices are the only ones that are online, it reads the original configuration file. If I put a new source drive on, then and I told it to do that, it would say they don't match, and it would just automatically overwrite the drive again, which is normal in a data recovery process. Does this only support MDFS? The, the, it can do any drive, but this process that I'm showing you only supports M MFTs right now. So it only supports NTFS. Do you normally do that by hand, and how long does it take by hand? Normally, I would tell the imager to do the entire drive, and it will do it, like I said, kind of in any order, but including damage or whatever. So right now, um, we're at the end of that particular chunk of data. Now at the end, it'll turn around and it'll go backwards. Um, it'll do three passes with different changes in between each pass. I can do four passes and make it do anything I want. And I can tell it turn off power if I have a failure. I can actually program steps in between. So I actually have the ability to choose like a what if scenario. So I can actually say how fast, what time, how many milliseconds. But if I actually got a sector that actually had a particular type of error, which I've covered in other talks that have actually done what types of errors. I could actually tell it then to power off the drive. I could actually tell it then to power it off and turn the drive off and turn it back on again. So I don't have to be there to finish the job, and it will continue on from there. So, uh, so and you'll see, like I said, at the, at the end of this, it'll turn around and it'll go backwards. It's going to do a pass backwards, which will change how the cache actually works on the device in case there was a problem with memory or something on the device going backwards actually kind of in effect disables it even though we can disable the cache directly but uh, uh, it does do a byte comparison during what's called an ECC pass if the drive actually returns an error most equipment will actually just fail it'll just say abort and it will not return a sector but you can actually request the sector back with certain pieces of hardware so you can get the you can get the sector back let's say 512 bytes maybe one byte was damaged you can actually request that back and it'll do a bitwise comparison and you can tell it how many times you want it to read. I can say read it 15 times, compare them, and figure out what the most probable answer is. So uh, quite a complex scenario. All right, so anyway, so it's done. It's actually going backwards. I have no errors at this point for the files that I care about. So I'm going to just stop it. I'm going to turn the thing off. And then I'm going to take the original destination disk again the destination disk I wrote all the data to. And I'm going to bring it back online. <clears throat> and so now it comes up, and you'll still see I have a de deactivated MBR. It's exactly the same state as what it was, except that now I'll actually have my file content. So I'll execute my image explorer. Uh, unfortunately, the project doesn't do a whole lot at the moment. Select my drive. So I'm just getting the list again. And you'll see all the green sectors, like wherever I click around on on a drive. So we did this, uh, let's say we did this porn LOL directory. So there's a folder called Vixens. And so I can actually, um, you can actually look at the map and you can see the file that I'm highlighting where all these blue dots are in the bottom of the green, so the greens are successful. 
it copied this file and the blue dot means they belong to this file. So you can actually have others, like I can scroll around anything that's green, I would actually have a copy of. So like if I'm scrolling down through, through the drive, like all this space, there's nothing there. I didn't copy any of those sectors. So, uh, so anyway, so I can actually go back now. Let's just say I want this folder. This is the one that actually has the data now on the drive. So if I save these files, it'll now save them in this folder. And I can go, even while it's writing them to my, my destination, it's storing them on this local machine. I now actually have this configuration. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go look at them. So, so, so these actually came off of that destination disk. So I can go look at them in thumbnails. Now the program's still actually exporting. Um, it could be anything that's wrong with drives from a standpoint of media damage, head damage, or certain locations of a drive that actually have physical damage to them. Um, this one is not that bad. It's not very bad. But if I had a very badly damaged drive, I mean, keep in mind, I'm trying to do a demo here, dude. Uh, I wanted it to work while I'm here. Uh, if I have a very badly damaged drive or something, like I have one on Friday that actually rebuilt the board and rebuilt the head assembly and had to uh, actually resolder a chip on it. And it still ended up with 1,600 errors at the end of it. But I was, 1,600 is nothing. I mean, that's, you know, eight megs or something. So, uh, <clears throat> so not much to deal with. So I've exported just those folders. And again, I did some others. So we could actually go back. Remember, I actually selected earlier, say, uh, this guy. And I did my documents. And I did the hot chicks folder. Is this, demo drive or is this, um, this one is kind of a demo drive at the moment. I didn't want to show too much uh, uh, bad stuff. So, uh, But I've done many of these uh, the same way in the last 30 days. So. Uh, but I can export the data and then go look at it. Um, well, the second most uh, seen hard drives, besides you know, like NTFS, literally is like 90% of what you get. Um, HFS is probably most of the rest of the 10%. Um, and occasionally, Linux or NAS boxes are about all that's left. Uh, this will image all of those drives. But it will not do this function, finding the individual files yet. It'll only do that on NTFS. It won't do it on any of the others. So, but that's that's typically the majority of what I'm looking at from that standpoint. So, uh, so anyway, that was just demonstrating it coming from that drive and getting that process. But I think that this is a pretty profound process that we're actually drilling down now with the same device, the same tools, the same equipment, and able to actually try to drill down specifically to individual files and actually get this done. So, yeah. DeepSpar is the vendor, but they also call the product the DeepSpar Disk Imager. So they name it like Microsoft Office, you know, same thing. So uh, so they use the same tools, the same idea to do everything. No, as a matter of fact, this upgrade that came free, like I've owned this box for like three years now, this upgrade came free. Uh, and they everything that they've done so far that has been upgrades, with the exception of changes to hardware, has been free. So if, I, if there's a change to the hardware, which has only happened once, um, and it wasn't necessary, you didn't have to have it. So uh, that's the only time they've ever charged anybody anything. So all the software that's on the box has been updated for free. So, what's that? If you open it up, what's inside? Is it like FPGA or? Um, I don't know exactly what's inside of it, other than the fact that it's probably just a flash device that also can control the uh, the physical power itself is probably related to the power switch and stuff as well. I mean, it's basically doing all its commands through the ATA command set and then some enhanced knowledge that they actually have with regards to individual vendors. Because one of the other things that this tool can do, uh, which is the only tool in its price range that actually does this, but I mean, it doesn't matter. It can do all of them, including ZIF drives and everything else. The only problem right now is actually solid state because solid state drives don't conform to the standard ATA subset. Does it have the interface connector? Yeah, they're just, uh, they're just bridge boards for all of them. Yeah, you need a PI license to do this, especially if it's on a forensics job, right? Inside joke or outside joke, however you want to get it. <laughs> 